I love painting these beautiful dogwoods in my front yard every year. I've already sketched them once outside, so here's the studio session. I'm playing with the new squirrel mop, loving it, like the hit and miss. So I'm doing a wash with cobalt teal, and here it's all sped up. So I'm just dashing a very loose wash around using most of the cobalts, and I'm making sure that I leave whites. It's very important to this painting that there's lots of whites in here. So now it's in the area where I start really getting interesting. I float the cobalt violet in, and I just let the paint Paint, painting paint itself. I have it all ready. My my um, desk is on a slight tilt and it's just floating down there. And all of these are very granulating colors. Not so granulating as when I was using the pollen ones outside, but definitely granulating. So they'll make interesting patterns. I really am not touching the dogwoods much to start with. I'm pulling a few of the shadows in. I'll pull some shadows in later, but really I'm wanting a dark, but not too dark background. Now I'm not doing the hot darks of summer. I'm doing nice spring colors. I've got a blue sky, some bright spring greens in there. It's just gorgeous. What's really going to make the dogwood stand out is painting the stamens and everything in the middle. That's what's going to pull them into focus. So I'm just dashing color around. I have a bunch of uh, tall pine trees. Pine trees, dogwoods, azaleas, classic southern combination. And notice how the shapes, the negative painting is enough really to show that they're dogwoods. I'll, I'll do some more later, but the primary part of this painting is the first wash. First 15 minutes. The entire painting took about an hour. Not including drying time, of course. Of course. I painted it once before outside sketching, so the actual painting is not necessarily just the the only painting time involved in this one. There's sketches, there's all, I paint my dogwoods every year. And what's really interesting about dogwood flowers is they're a little bit translucent, but they're not transparent like most white flowers. They show shadows and just a hint of what's behind them. So that completely changes the game from, say, white irises. All right, after it's dried completely, I'm going back in because I'm going to want to sharpen up a few stages. I thought you'd like to see my palette in this. This is as close as I can get to exactly at the right time and the colors I'm using. And so I go back and forth on that. And as you can see, I really don't mix color. Any color mixing that happens on my palette is mostly accidental because I'm in the middle of painting and my brush is going crazy and I've got some color from the previous wash in it or I just smear it all over the place but I'm not actually mixing on my palette I might mix a color or two at the very end but mostly I'm just working out the color on my palette Getting it nice and smooth, the right consistency that I want. That's a little bit trickier, more important to do at the end stages where I'm painting on the white petals, but still not much mixing going on. 
So this painting is mostly the cobalt teal, cobalt violet, and the nickel azo yellow. I use some hints of the cobalt blue, a little bit of burnt sienna. That's about it. So just let your brush move and go crazy with it. This is still a very loose stage. If you feel yourself getting too tight, drop some water on it. Let everything blur. It doesn't matter. I'm going to want some texture in the flowers petals anyways. So why not put some texture in? It's not going to hurt to have some splatter paint on there. Cobalt teal. And that combination makes for some wonderful granulations. I don't usually set out to do a limited palette painting. That's really not my sort of style. But I have a very limited palette to start with. And, you know, I don't. I usually pick a couple of the colors to be the strong players in the painting. I may use a couple more, and I never use a color in just one place. Um, as you can see from my palette, and I guess I haven't gone over it in a while, but I, I usually try different colors. Right now I have a burnt umber and a raw sienna and a yellow ochre that... I really don't ever use so they probably need to go off um, but you never know I am not even using Viridian or Thalo blue uh, Thalo green in this um, the nickel azo and cobalt teal makes the bright but slightly subtler spring green that I'm looking for Oh, and ultramarine blue. I forgot I was using ultramarine. Um, I'm limiting the burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue to just a few places. I needed the burnt sienna um, particularly because the tip of the petals has kind of this browny blood red spot on it and um, exactly burnt sienna color. So um, I wanted to also darken up a few areas, but I wanted to keep the background fairly transparent or translucent in this so I was limiting the opaque burnt sienna and also ultramarine we all know that gets dark and heavy and I wanted this light in spring so nickel azo yellow again it's a really bright yellow but it's not quite so acid yellow as my um, azo yellow or cadmium yellow. I didn't want anything too heavy. And splatter! Have fun with painting. It should be an absolute joy to do. Seem to be off the thing by about one second, but I've, I've fixed that technical difficulty for the next one. I probably won't show my palette in all of them, so do enjoy it if you are curious. Now the slight angle is laying the colors flow even at this stage where I've dried and notice how the dogwoods just they they are starting to really pop and next stage is going to be time to yeah let some of them pop but some of them go back because I'm looking for kind of 
like little white butterflies, just uh, dancing dogwood flowers. And I've used the classic diagonal composition. Great with flowers of all kinds. Hogarth curve or diagonal is, is a classic one and it, it just feels good to your eye. Everything's balanced. Okay, it's dried and now it's time to put the, the details in the petals. And really, I'm just going around with the nickel azo yellow and adding the little details. And then when that's all ready and the ones that are less in focus, I'm adding a little less detail. And all I'm doing is dropping in some of the cobalt teal, a little bit of the violet, and then go back. I'm go back and add the shadows around them. Um, the shadows on that, that fourth one back are really intriguing. I wish I'd gotten a better close up of that one because that would have been nice. Unfortunately, my sketches started two weeks ago and wow, dogwoods disappear quickly, don't they? I still have some petals, but the leaves have taken over and they're not quite as interesting when it's not the, the flock of white butterflies. All right, so I'm being a little pickier with my color mixing here. Um, still not mixing colors together much, um, though the cobalt teal has gotten pretty green. So what happens when you go right in with azo yellow, right? I mean, um, yeah, nickel azo yellow, a little subtler color. Now those small touches of burnt sienna really bring that into focus. Whether you believe the Cherokee legends or about dogwoods or the Jesus on the cross and the four little brown red spots or blood versions don't ever pick dogwoods it's just bad luck personally I kind of prefer the Cherokee ones so this is where things can get heavy-handed this is where it already looks like dogwoods I know it does and so I don't want to do too much. I want to do just enough to bring them into focus and have them fluttering in and out of focus. A few more shadows. But this is where my sketches usually, I'm so interested in the shadows, so interested in all of the intricacies of it, that 
heavy handedness is easy. So when in doubt, don't touch it. Just put it up and look at it for a day. I hope this inspires you to paint your own dogwoods or flock of white flowers of your choice. Have fun painting this weekend. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you want to see more. Happy painting! <laughs>